In this video I'm going to show you a really beautiful little bit of uh, maths, um, both in terms of the numbers and literally it's going to produce a, a, a very striking uh, image. And uh, it's all based on Pascal's triangle. Now Pascal's triangle, if you know it, contains all sorts of uh, patterns and sequences. And what I want to show you is something uh, really hidden in the structure of Pascal's triangle. We could almost use Pascal's triangle to to generate some some art based on uh, with like a fractal uh, pattern underneath it. We'll talk about what this means in a second. But you can skip ahead a, uh, a minute if you've seen Pascal's triangle before. Um, I've just got Pascal's triangle up here, and it's a very simple mathematical. Uh, construction in a way, but it does just take a few uh, seconds to, to understand how it works. So um, if you uh, look at Pascal's triangle, um, in the top row here we've got a 1, and then underneath it we have uh, a 1 and uh, a 1, and in the rows uh, below, uh, the next one you see here is 1, 2, 1, I use the pointer instead, uh, and each of the numbers in Pascal's triangle is made by adding together the two numbers immediately above it to the left and the right. So this 3 you can see here, um, that's equal to 1 plus 2. So you look above the 3, take the 1 and the 2, add them together. Like this 6 here right in the middle, there's two 3s immediately above to the left and the right. They add together and give 6. 15 here in the bottom, it's 10 plus 5 above it. And the only time that's not quite the rule is that when you have the ones on the outside, they're always ones on the left and the right hand side. If you think about it, you can think about sort of adding together the one above it and there's nothing to the right, so it just stays as one. Okay, so that's Pascal's triangle. Now to see the patterns that I'd like to in Pascal's triangle, I need a lot more rows than that. So what you can see here is I've opened up uh, an Excel spreadsheet. You don't need to know anything about using Excel here uh, for this video, but um, in, this, in this spreadsheet I've put Pascal's triangle in and I've uh, generated it row by row. Now it's slightly at a slant here because uh, Excel works in that rows and columns, but you can see the set that structure here. You know, we had one, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one, and they're the first uh, each row here. One, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one, one, four, six, four, one, and so it just keeps going down like this. So we've got we've got Pascal's triangle on a little bit of a slant, um, but the nice thing about Excel is once you've defined the rule here, I just say okay, uh, a five plus b five. So it's adding together the two above. Uh, to the left and the right, you can just you, know, you can just drag that rule out, and it you know it actually gen you know just generates as much of Pascal's triangle as you want. And the problem is actually what I want to do is to look at some really enormous numbers in Pascal's triangle. You can see it gets really big really quickly here, where it says e e o a t o nine. That's where it's you know you've got uh, that many uh, sort of zeros after after the end. Well, not zeros, but it's that that size of number. So some really big numbers down here, and actually it gets very uh, cumbersome, you know, e even with a computer to start compute to keep computing all these really large numbers and working them out. So we're going to have to work around that a little bit, um, but uh, that's not too hard, right? Because what I want to look at here is not really the numbers, but I want to look at the pattern of where are there odd and even numbers. If you've got a few minutes, it's quite a nice exercise just to write out a few rows and to start to circle all the even numbers and see if you can spot any pattern before doing this. But I'm going to I'm going to show you now because I've generated this. So let's go to the next tab. And so the, the ones here uh, represent odd numbers and the e's uh, are even numbers and I've just shaded in those numbers which are odd. So you know these are really large numbers but actually in order to generate this quite efficiently we can just realize that when you add to uh, when you add to odd numbers together you get an even number, add an odd and an even, uh, you get an odd number, add two even numbers, you, you get an even number. So I can make a rule here that just if you're interested in the Excel form, it's just looking above and saying, you know, are the, you know, uh, what's you know what's the combination of odd and even you've got above it, and and use that to get to generate the next row. And we start to see this quite interesting pattern that we've got this um, triangles appearing uh, inside triangles. And uh, the nice thing about this, if we look at this on a, a bigger scale, okay, so here's about the same amount again. I've just got slightly different colouring here, and of course all the zeros over here aren't really part of the triangle. That's uh, so the triangle ends here. Um, but if you zoom out, uh, so some of these numbers, you know, this is like a hundred rows down in Pascal's triangle. Now oh, these would be enormous numbers if you were looking at the the, the real triangle. Um, but that pattern has this self similarity to it, and it's what um, you know is, is an element of a fractal, uh, as the mathematicians would would, would call this uh, in this pattern. So you see my original. 
pattern at the beginning, which has you know a small triangle, you know triangle with a hole in it, and then you look at the next layer up, and that's also got the same structure. It's got three triangles now with a hole in it, and you look at you take one of those, and then you take the same structure. Okay, take make a triangle out of three of those and put and, and, and put a hole in it, and then make a triangle out of three of those and put a hole in it. Um, so it's quite remarkable, really. You know that this is where all of the structure of odd and even numbers in Pascal's triangle are. And that is in itself is a very interesting result. And you, know, you keep going out and out and whatever level you look at this on, you get the same thing. Uh, the same pattern is would keep going uh, you know, forever how much you manage, however much you could zoom out on it. And we get this you know, quite sort of artistic looking um, picture. So uh, you know, I was thinking about this with a, with a colleague when I was teaching on a summer school a while ago. And another nice thing about maths is often if you play around with things, uh, that seem interesting, you find even more interesting things. And I, I don't just—I don't claim to have discovered this result at all. I'm sure many, many people have noticed this before me. But in a sense, we did discover it, you know, because we were solving the problem, and we, and we, you know, we felt like we'd found, you know, something interesting as we did this. And that's really, and that's really the process of, 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 uh, of doing maths properly, you know, and really, uh, and really getting the best out of it. So what we did next was this. We thought, well, okay, if this is the pattern for even and odd numbers. What about if we looked at something a little bit more complicated? So not whether they're just even and odd, but what they're like in base three. Okay, so, so even and odd is like base two. It's like when you divide the number by two, is the remainder one if it's odd or zero if it's even? Um, and you could do the same with three. Okay, if you divide a number by three, the remainder is either zero, one, or two. Right? You do five divided by three, you get, a rem you get one remainder two. Um, 11 divided by 3, you get 3 remainder 2. Okay, um, so you know, it can either be, uh, sorry, did I say that correctly? When you divide it by 3, it's either got a remainder of 1 or 2 or, or 0 if it's exactly divisible by 3. Okay, so let's see what happens when we apply the colouring. Okay, so in base 3, I've now got 0, 1, and 2 for the remainders, so the zeros are now actually multiples of 3, um, and the 1s are numbers like 4, which is, has a remainder of 1, and the green ones are, have a remainder of 2, numbers like 5 and 8 and 11. And we see something really interesting again. We've got this same sort of uh, structure for the, uh, for, the, for, the, for the numbers, and then when we zoom out, we again see this sort of uh, fractal pattern uh, uh, appearing. And the interesting thing about this is, and it's going to look a little clearer when we look at some of the other bases, is that within each of the fractal patterns, the uh, you, you know, you, you, you get a you get the repetition of all of the all of the structure. Okay, so if we look at let's say we look at this triangle here with like these uh, six small the triangles in it and the three orange ones inside, you can see there's five triangles here that have mostly blue with a bit of green, and then one here that has mostly green with a bit of blue. Um, and if I go out to the next next layer, you also see that in the structure here. I've got one, two, three, four, five large triangles, mainly blue with a bit of green, and then one here that's mainly green with a bit of blue. And that same pattern keeps appearing. Here we go, we've got our really big green triangle and uh, other blue ones. I'm sorry if, uh, if, if uh, it's quite hard to see the difference between blue and green here, and I know some people are blue-green colorblind, so sorry about that. It'll be a bit clearer in some of the other pictures if that's um, if that's a problem. Um, now, it gets the, and so that gets something interesting again. And the natural thing to do, of course, is now to say, well, what happens when you look not just at you know base three, but we go base four, base five, and so let's have a look at those results. Um, try it in base four, and so we've now got when you divide by four, you could have remainder zero, one, two, three. Um, you know, zero or two would give you even numbers, uh, and then one and three uh, uh, would be odd numbers, um, and we get this uh, great pattern again. Now. When you look at this one, if you think about what's going on, we've got the orange, which is divisible by 4, and you've also got the purple, which is remainder 2, uh, when divided by 4. So they are also even numbers, right? If I, like 6, you know, I, I divide it by 4 and I get a remainder of 2, so it's still an even number. So what you can see here is that original base 2 pattern, uh, just of the odd and even numbers, let's go back to a similar sort of, similar sort of scale, right? We get that sort of structure here, and you can see that sort of almost in purple you know, underneath, uh, underneath this structure here, um, you know, with the uh, uh, purple and orange. So, like in the base two pattern, this thing here is just a big orange triangle, right? But within those even numbers, we've also got even numbers 
that are now multiples of four and, and ones that are not multiples of four. So we've got a, a refined structure um, there. And we've also got this added exciting detail of the ones and the threes. Uh, and we see that self-similarity both um, you know, uh, in, in the shapes, but also in the colorings within the shapes um, as, we, as we go on. Okay, so, so that's that. Now, okay, base, let's have a look at base five. We're gonna see a bit of, um, there's perhaps some number theory coming through in here as well. And um, in base five, uh, we get, again, now we can have remainder zero, one, two, three, or four. And we see that actually the structure we've got here, you see, because these triangles are, aren't appearing at the same uh, levels within Pascal's triangle. They have different, different sizes in the different bases. And this time in base five, We've got this. Uh, we've got this structure that appears uh, in in fives, right? And so I've got a triangle with five, just sort of five down in each direction. Again, that you've got these two predominantly yellow triangles, which contain a lot of numbers that are four have remained a four when divisible but divided by five. And again, when we look at the slightly larger triangle, we have two triangles here in yellow. And again, when we zoom out, we zoom out further still. Um, you know, we see uh, we would see those again. Although actually. Um, you know, these uh, there, there, there's one and there's another one. It's actually getting quite hard. You know, I've got a pretty fast uh, laptop running here, and it's it's struggling to do this. And you know, that should give you an idea of that of how like fine a detail we are here. This is enormously long way down Pascal's triangle. I wonder if I can just uh, zoom in on a cell here and see how many rows down we are here. This is like 600 rows down uh, in Pascal's triangle. I mean, if we were computing the actual numbers here, they'd be astronomical. I'm not even doing the numbers here. I am applying a rule about divisibility by five to work this out and, and, and my laptop is still struggling a little bit. So to see this is um, is not trivial. This this, this this file actually that contains the, the image is like 30 megabytes or something, you know, which is which given they're just uh, um, zeros, ones, twos, threes, fours, it's, 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 it's quite surprising. Okay, anyway, uh, there we go. So that's, the, that's base five. Now, uh, let's have a think then what, so, so and five is prime and we see this nice, neat structure with five uh, individual triangles and you know four is the only non-prime we've seen so far and that had this slightly more complicated pattern of you know having like one uh, the base two image overlaid with something else and that's what we're going to see in base six okay um, not at all obvious when you just look at the first few layers but uh, you can start to see here look, look at this how this like green layer here is overlaying slightly all of the other stuff it's almost like it's sitting underneath the, the triangle and we'll see it more clearly when we zoom out but these green numbers are ones that are, have remained a three when, you, when they're divisible by six. Okay, so that actually means, if you think about it, they're numbers like nine, uh, 15, 21. They're also multiples of three. Okay, um, And we've got the twos and the fours, which are the purples and the yellows here. So if you get a remainder of two or four when you divide by six, they're the even numbers. Okay, So we've got like a bit of the base two structure and the base three structure that we saw earlier, base two and base three kind of overlaying a little bit here uh, to give base six. So we're actually, you know, seeing the interaction between the prime numbers here playing out, uh, playing out in this image. And it's a pretty, uh, it's it's a pretty neat thing to look at, I think, you know, um, you know, just from such from such simple rules here. And, you know, as we as we, uh, you know, we, we see this and actually, again, it's getting the, the, it's struggling to generate it uh, any, any further down than this, but we see that structure really clearly. And, and, you know, it feels as we're looking at this, looks like we're seeing, you know, some real truth about the underlying uh, number system here and, 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 and how those basic operations work. That beautiful sort of yellow and purple base two pattern and the, and the uh, base three green pattern coming together two times three is six into a, into a base six pattern. Okay, um, let's look at one or two more. If we go to base seven, seven is prime, and you know, perhaps you uh, should have asked you to think what you expect here. But seven, base seven is quite like base five here, uh, but we've now got seven by seven in our big triangle. And again, my computer's just really struggling to, to to generate enough. But what if we were to to pull out from this further? Again, we would see this whole large triangle at the top. You can see the start of it here. It would appear. It would appear once more here, once more here, with a big uh, orange gap in the middle. And it would have a very similar structure to the base five picture um, as we've got here. Um, and then the last one I've got here is base eight. Okay, so this one is two cubed. So again, what you see here is an interaction of uh, the base two uh, and four patterns. You know, we can see divisible by eight now 
uh, here in zeros, uh, and anything that's 2, 4, 6, or 8 as a remainder would be even, right? So you see this whole area here has things that are just 2s, 4, 6, 8s, and zeros. So these are all even numbers. In the base 2 picture, these are all just their own like orange triangle, because they're all even, but we've got some richer structure there um, sit, sitting sitting within that original base 2 pattern. That whole area you see would, uh, would, would correspond to this area here, but in base 8 it's got its own it's got more more compl complicated detail um, and as we zoom out again we see that structure and we see again not just the shapes repeating but the colors and all of the individual patterns um, having this self similarity um, you know that we often uh, I mean not not all fractals are self similar There's some good videos out there on, on that but you know we have this you know, it's a thing of uh, I'll make some videos on fractals at some point as well there's, there's some other good ones out there but um, you know it's uh, um, a beautiful result and the great thing about fractals is they're actually turning out uh, in maths to be incredibly uh, interesting. For example, um, uh, Benoit Mandelbrot, who was a mathematician who um, did a lot of work on fractals and wrote some amazing um, research and books showing the beauty of different sort of fractal patterns like this, also happened to do a lot of work in mathematical finance and a lot of the models that we have for how financial assets evolved are also based on uh, in, certain, in some sense, on things that have a fractal structure to them, um, as as it see, as it appears, perhaps are many things in in, in nature and, um, uh, and and lots of other lots, lots of other you know important sort of scientific principles that have fractals at the heart of them. So I think this is a brilliant bit of maths, um, and you know it's 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 kind of got everything. It's really simple to look at and to understand. Um, it's got a, a beautiful um, uh, picture to, to look at as we talk about it and it's also pointing us towards some really serious uh, mathematical research um, you know that that, that is uh, very very highly applicable so I hope that was interesting a bit different to the usual content I wanted to uh, you know we do I do a lot of practical videos for exams and things um, and so this one was quite different but I hope you've enjoyed it let me know what you think um, plenty more oh I've disappeared uh, plenty more um, uh, content uh, here if you go over to the to my website here at uh, Mathsaurus at www.mathsaurus.com uh, don't forget to subscribe to the videos uh, to share them to like them all that sort of stuff if uh, you've enjoyed it and um, I will see you all soon